Hello guys, welcome back to another video for Alex's Flying Club. I am back in the DC-3, but this time it is a bit of a different DC-3. And we're going to be flying from the Milwaukee airport. Um, from one of the Milwaukee airports, I think it's called Timmerman, if I'm not mistaken, to Iowa Falls, Iowa, to a small airport there. And mostly in this video, I wanted to demonstrate this new DC-3, which I think is built uh, um, built up upon the default Microsoft Flight Simulator 2004 DC-3. But there are some modifications, and mostly is uh, what I was looking for is what I'm pointing to right there, the VOR navigational radio indicators and ILS indicators and there's the controls and I know I just uh, previewed the radio stack for the default DC3 in um, previous video I think it was two videos ago but now this uh, DC3 has a different radio stack so uh, in a lot of ways it's more intuitive and more modern and um, yeah I said in my previous video that I like to um, do ILS approaches instrument landing approaches and um, yeah, this plane, this uh, DC-3 allows me to do that. So a second ago, I hovered over the mixture controls, which is another new addition to this DC-3. Um, instead of manually moving the knobs or incrementally moving them with your joystick, I just select auto mixture, uh, rich, auto lean, idle cutoff. Those are preset and they'll automatically um, be controlled by the plane if I wish them to be. I can also, I believe, control them manually. So I'm just starting up the DC-3. And I should mention this is uh, Norman Hancock's DC-3 um, with uh, his panels. It's a distinct aircraft. It's not just kind of a modification of the default DC-3, even, even though I think it's built up on it. But it is a... Um, it has its own unique uh, physics and characteristics that are more accurate um, and true to life. And Norman Hancock is part of the DC-3 Airways that are putting on the DC-3 World Rally. And I really wanted to get this aircraft and try it out because I'm planning to use it for the World Rally, which begins tomorrow. And um, yeah, this was my first attempt at flying it. I had a kind of a rocky start. It took me about an hour to actually get it off the ground. Um, I had problems pretty much at every stage, um, and this is actually this beginning sequence is actually a few different flights patched together because I crashed on my first takeoff attempt, um, not, and which I do kind of often with new aircraft. <laughs> um, but I got used to it soon enough, and uh, the reason I crashed was because I had uh, the tail wheel locked during takeoff, which is fine, but it really restricts your uh, rudder control as you're taking off. And I was used to the default DC-3, which I think is has more rudder, um, capa more rudder capabilities in that situation. But this one barely turned the aircraft. And when I gunned the throttle, um, I wasn't perfectly lined up straight on the runway. And I just uh, veered right off the runway. I couldn't turn it fast enough. So if you're using this DC-3, and I'll definitely post a link to where you can get this plane. It's it's freeware. Um, you should make sure to line up straight on the runway before you take off. I guess it's common sense, but it's a lesson I learned the hard way today. So I'm taxiing to the runway. And I'll go over some of the new uh, panels and instruments in, in more detail during the course of this flight.
before takeoff. I'm not sure if I showed it, but <clears throat> I programmed the um, navigation radios to the first waypoint so that we can start tracking our next destination. And the autopilot here is more advanced than the Sperry autopilot in the default DC-3. This one is this one is almost uh, similar to the Cessna 172. Very similar, it seems to me. So there's the communication radio on the left-hand side of the radio stack, and it's switched to the frequency automatically using the air traffic control interface. Here you can control the rate at which you climb, which is kind of similar to the uh, Sperry autopilot, but we can also set an altitude in this autopilot that'll stay constant. We don't have to play with the pitch settings. That's uh, fog on the ground, not snow. I think this is actually supposed to be during the summer. But it's the way fog appears in the game. I'm going to request an altitude increase to try to get above the weather. Definitely going too fast here for the climb rate that I want. I think I should be at about 120 if I'm not mistaken for the climb rate. Actually, 105 is the best rate of climb. Cruising climb is 120 to 130 knots, according to the information provided by DC-3 Airways, virtual airways. And here I'm controlling my speed by the rate of climb. I've set my throttles to the my throttle and RPM to the climbing uh, settings. And there's my navigation radio. I'm heading to the first waypoint. Both nav one and nav two are set to, to the same uh, VOR frequency. Right there. Shows us uh, whether we need to turn right or left to get back on, to hone in on the uh, source of the frequency. And I really enjoy flying this aircraft. Um, I like the default DC-3 as well. The panels look really nice and authentic to me. Um, but these ones are brighter and uh, really easy to read. And at first I was skeptical, but after this first flight, um, they look they look good to me and they're very useful, very functional. I like uh, actually reading the numbers of the airspeed and the, um, uh, yeah, mostly the airspeed, rather than just having to zoom in each time on the dial. 
And if you hover over many of the instruments, it tells you exactly what the setting is set at, which is not the case with some of the default aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So very, very cool aircraft. If you want to fly the DC-3, definitely worth the downloading this free plane. There's the airspeed indicator. There it shows the nautical miles to get to the destination, uh, the speed we're traveling at in knots, and how many minutes it expects us to get there. I believe that's also ground speed, which, uh, don't quote me on that, but that's my guess, is that it displays ground speed, which is useful for certain navigation calculations. Here we have the regular uh, instruments showing temperature, pressure, and here are the fuel controls. And actually, I think in this DC-3 you can switch which uh, fuel tanks are drawing um, fuel, or which fuel tanks the engines are drawing fuel from. I haven't tried it yet, but I, I think in the default DC-3 it kind of does it automatically for you, but here you get the option of playing with it. But I, I didn't touch it this flight because I'm not sure what should burn first. I just let the main tanks burn evenly for this flight. So, something I have to read up on. I did use the GPS this flight um, just to see uh, where air traffic control was leading me to and kind of get a feel for the navigation radios and where the signals were coming from in relationship to the Tora actual position. And here I'm demonstrating the different frequencies I've set it to for our waypoints. And if we, here this is a, a mirror image on this compass of the instrument on the left, you see I'm moving the dial. And this is one way I can tell what direction the signal is coming from for the VORs. That's something I was wondering about before. Um, if, you adjust, if you adjust that knob, however many clicks you have to make past your actual heading is where the... Um, signal is coming from. So if, if you do five clicks to the right, that means it's coming uh, five degrees to the right of you. Or you have, you have to turn your plane five degrees to hone in on that signal. And something that I kind of was forced to look up and learn during the course of this flight was the how to navigate with the GPS properly using waypoints and in addition how to make an instrument a approach using the GPS. So um, my first attempt at landing was actually, um, I was 
I was tasked to make an approach with the GPS and I'd never done that before and I was kind of confused and I went uh, and almost crashed into the ground but uh, I YouTubed uh, how to do it um, and uh, figured out that you can actually make an approach quite similar to a um, an approach using ILS but you it won't automatically control your descent rate for you uh, or at least I haven't figured out a way to do that um, I don't but I don't believe GPS will do that for you but it will control your um, your aileron so that you're coming in straight in the runway and it's up to you to just control the descent rate and the throttles and uh, you can make a very accurate approach with the GPS I didn't do it this uh, on this landing, I requested a visual landing because I wanted to practice the GPS approaches in a little Cessna before I tried it on this flight, which I did do. I practiced them, and um, I also practiced um, navigating without the use of GPS or without uh, air traffic control directing me. And I had my first successful flight using my own VOR NDB navigation calculations um, using the E6B calculator to find uh, the heading to account for wind drift um, and I was able to successfully fly from Madison, Wisconsin to Milwaukee um, going through a roundabout way that I created to try various uh, uh, navigation beacons and uh, yeah that was a good exercise and I think it, it'll serve me in good stead for the world rally that begins tomorrow. I don't know if I'll need it for the first flight, which is, um, I think, will be facilitated by air, tra air traffic control, but the second flight in Peru will uh, be visual fr flight rules, so I'll definitely have to use those navigational aids for that flight. It's probably the smallest runway I've landed it in so far during uh, our virtual journey across the United States. And another surprise that was in store for me was that this runway does not have a dedicated uh, air traffic controller, as far as I can tell. Um, I didn't have to get any clearance to taxi or anything like that. I just um, landed and went where I thought I should. me a long time to find a simple explanation for how to navigate with um, the E6B calculator in Flight Simulator 2004. I kind of had to piece together um, a version of an explanation for myself using various sources that went to great detail about it. Um, but I think all I needed, at least for the flight that I did, was the E6B calculator app for my phone. I used a few functions on that mostly to calculate um, the wind uh, angle correction and um, also uh, if you don't want to use GPS you can use you can use various tools that uh, Flight Simulator provides like to to actually get the current wind uh, direction and speed, you, sh you press Shift Z, at least in Flight Simulator 2004. So you press Shift Z and that'll display the wind um, information for you. 
and you can use that to calculate the wind correction angle. And I'll hopefully go over that in a little more detail in some of my next videos. So as I'm doing the DC3 World Rally, um, I'll be posting those videos and probably take a break for about a month with uh, the videos on a, of our journey across the United States. If I do post those videos, um, I'll probably try other aircraft since I'll be flying the DC-3 so much for the World Rally. But oh, there's the um, skin for DC-3 Airways. It's the default one when you download this aircraft. So... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you very soon.